wrong with the NBA in a nutshell? You finally got real teams in the NBA finals. We got real basketball going on. And the next day, people are supposed to be talking about the game, what another team got to do to make an adjustment to get from point A to point B. Instead, we're sitting here talking about what? What are we sitting here talking about? We're sitting here talking about one thing and one thing only. Kyrie Irving said he want LeBron James to come to the Mavs. And everybody keep asking me about it, and I've been avoiding it all day because I don't want to talk about LeBron James. There's nothing to talk about. The bum got swept. He's done. He's washed. Okay? We washed it out. Oh, my foot. No, stick that foot up your ass. You had 40 in the last game, and it didn't mean a damn thing. So, I don't want to hear about LeBron James. This is a fake story. It makes no sense. But I will let my subscribers know I've heard it. And this is, this is my response to it. Okay? So that anybody who came to come to me and probably say, yo, I'm going to come to Sino because I want to see what Sino got to say about it. What's up? And shouts out to Kwame Brown, Bus Life. Shouts out to the whole Bus Life squad. Don't forget to support them and subscribe to them. Uh, welcome to HDTV, Seahawks Jose Rodriguez's channel, and definitely uh, Ticket TV, who's been cranking out videos as usual. His content is up. I can never stay caught up with him, with his activity and work. He keeps it moving. Now, with that in full swing, I want to say this. Let's look at it from a perspective of all these stupid idiots that talked about this today. I didn't watch Undisputed, so I don't know if Undisputed did. I know the first thing I saw about it was Nick Wright talking about it. I see Shams made a post about it and Pat McAvee was talking about it and had Shams on there when he made the post. Then I seen uh, everybody else pick it up, like Colin Callherd picks it up and starts talking about it. And they start debating it. LeBron on the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> and I'm sitting here and my brain going... This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard any human being actually say out their mouth. NBA TV picks this up and on social media where it should be the Denver Nuggets and the Miami Heat promoted by NBA TV. What we're hearing is Kyrie Irving and LeBron James. This is fake news by LeBron's media team. And Kyrie, I'm disappointed in him that he's even allowing this to go on without him speaking out saying this is some bull. <laughs> you know, like, this is just another storyline to take away from the NBA Finals because LeBron ain't in it. Because he lost. I'm just going to take all the attention away. Look at me. Look at me. I'm juggling. LeBron's juggling. Man, LeBron went to his nephew game. So what? If you care about LeBron so much, then don't watch the NBA Finals. Go on social media, follow everything LeBron do, and go over there. Other people want to move forward. I don't want to talk about this bum. This guy is trash. He has literally tore the game down to a mineral. He's ruined the All-Star game. You got players going on team to team to team to team to team. So he's ruined the actual team aspect of the game. Everybody jumping team. Like musical chairs. They got to come out with new rules for it now. Why? Because of LeBron James. So everything he's done has taken away from the game of basketball. We got to make allowances for him because he can't get by anybody. So we got to run people. Over. We got to allow that to go and act like we didn't see it. Well, he's just too strong. No, he's just a bum. 
And, and once they start allowing and calling the calls correctly, he won't be effective. He's He can barely get to 20-some points. Now, with all the things they give him, imagine if they refed him properly. What did I say before? CBA? There you go. CBA player. So... This is what we're dealing with right now. This is what we're up against. This is the narrative that people keep trying to run over and over again like it's some type of uh like it's some type of fest that we don't know nothing about like oh man, we don't know nothing about what's going on here. We know what's going on here. Let's look at it from a realistic standpoint. All you guys have watched the NBA for years. So I don't need to tell y'all what's going on. Y'all know LeBron James is getting $46.5 million for the Lakers next year. And you think they're going to trade that? Kyrie Irving is looking for a $200 million deal. You got Luka already on the damn team. What do you think Luka's going to do if you got LeBron on it, on the damn team? That's going to elevate the team? You want to get a busted tire and bring this flat tire over to the damn team? So he can torpedo the damn team? What can he add to the team? Bringing his BS to Dallas? Oh, no. That ain't, that ain't never happening. He's not leaving California. He's not leaving Los Angeles. He's going to stay over there and pay and get his $46 million. He going to, what, come over there and play for a reduced salary? While Kyrie gets his money? He going to play for the bare minimum and give up his $46 million? You must don't know LeBron James too well, do you? He want all his cash. And who the hell are you going to trade him for? Maxi Kleber? Come on. <laughs> Man, get, the, get real. Get real, people. This is a delusion. This is wasted energy, time, and, and space, basically. All these people have nothing to talk about. The NBA Finals is going on. Michael Malone is right for calling out this sports media because it is trash. They need to be talking about the Heat, Jimmy Butler, and the Denver Nuggets. Instead, I got to sit here and waste my time talking about this garbage. We need to be focused on the game, the actual game itself. Because now that we're not focused on it, they know, like, look, we could just keep making these articles up and get everybody excited about next season. What's exciting about LeBron going to Dallas? Nothing. Team with Kyrie and Luka. For what? Luka going to get even more pissed off because then LeBron going to start blaming somebody. It's going to be Kyrie's fault. Kyrie is ruining LeBron and Luka. Like another drama show that you don't even need. I mean, everybody has their own perspective, but this is a narrative that I can't deal with. I can't force anybody else to have to deal with. Everyone else who knows me knows one or two different things in succession. The first thing is don't ever, meaning don't ever compare. Don't ever compare this new era of basketball to the Jordan era or nobody else because they, they would have never been doing anything goofy like this. When Michael Jordan retired or Michael Jordan won playing in the offseason, he was basically, when they, let's say, when the Orlando Magic played in the championship against the Houston Rockets. They had eliminated Michael Jordan, who came back for about the last 16 games of the season to get the Bulls in the playoffs and keep them there. Now, the Bulls finished that season probably at like the sixth seed or the seventh seed. So they had lost because Scotty was so great. <laughs> Michael had to come back to save the team to make sure they made the playoffs. 
Now, since they made the playoffs, here's the thing that I don't understand. Right? When they made the playoffs and Jordan got eliminated in the second round by the Orlando match. And Orlando moved on to play against they went on to play against uh, who did they play against? The Orlando Magic played against uh, the Rockets. I was just saying that. So they played against the Rockets. Do you think they was mentioning Michael Jordan? Do you think it wasn't Twitter and Facebook and all that, but do you think they were mentioning Michael Jordan? Or they was focused on the Magic and Shaq and Elijah one? It was Shaq versus Elijah one. That was the storyline. That was the game. Old line versus young line. Shaq finally got to the NBA Finals, and he's got the team. They they the favorites, and he going up against the old line and Akeem Olajuwon, and this is where it's supposed to go down. But did we get that? Did we get that? What you saw was a veteran take a young kid to school. Shaq was getting school. Now, with that being said, there was no focus on Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals. When social media came into play, and since Adam Silver has been in there, it's always been this narrative we got to keep promoting a player that does not resonate the game. He does not push the game forward. Watching him, he's the narrative that they keep pushing because they promoted him since 2003. So for 20 years, you've been milking this cow and making him larger than life, ignoring all of your talent, all of the personalities. All of these guys are co-stars to LeBron James being the star, even Steph Curry. You can have him as a supporting cast to a 40-year-old man. Damn near. He's 38 to the fifth power. And you got him out there trying to drag and pull a team all the way across the board. And the fans aren't fooled. You know, they know there's other players better than him on the court. And it's like, why are you pushing, trying to push that to an NBA Finals? It just doesn't make sense. You're like, oh, it's good for business because LeBron's going to promote it. He's going to sell it. No, you've been selling LeBron. What happens if you put that around a player that could really play the game? If you put that same type of backing behind a Kyrie Irving, you put the same type of backing around all of these players who are talented, now, a lot of them don't have the, the camera, on-camera personality LeBron has and selling it like he's a player and he's dominant, but he's clearly not. As Phil Handy just told you, Kyrie Irving is the most skilled basketball player he's ever seen, ever. And Phil Handy works with LeBron. He's worked with everybody you could tell. Those who are working on a game, and guys who just take the bare minimum shortcuts and just spend time working on their body, making sure their body looks the part, but they ain't working on their game. They just shooting a bunch of threes and lifting weights. And when we point this out to you by noticing the game and looking at the game, and we start saying to them, like, man, you know, like, this is where it's at. You know, like, this is... This is very telling what we're seeing right here. You know, most of the time you got people in, we're not seeing a lot of uh, things happen that should be happening. And it's causing a, a, a dis, it's like this disconnect 
between what's reality and what's not reality. And for some reason, people don't get it. But they're trying to distract you away from the NBA Finals to keep your mind focused on LeBron. <clears throat> I've never seen a team that was as gifted as the Denver Nuggets and be totally ostracized after losing the game. We just saw a great game. It was 1-1 now, and this series is in the balance still. It's the best of five now. So whoever's going to win three out of the next five games, that's going to be your winner. Now, I'm intrigued by that. The game goes to Miami. Miami now has stolen home court advantage. But it's a game-by-game -game basis where it don't matter if they're playing at home or anywhere else. Miami proved one thing. They can win in Denver. So now that they've proven that they can win in Denver, now what can't they do? Where can't they go? I mean, the Miami Heat has showed you what the next man up really means. Kevin Love is probably, I don't know if he's older than LeBron, but he's got he's up there. And the old man is still crafty enough to beat these athletic young players like Michael Porter Jr. See, when you have a player on the court that you can get matched up on, and you can defend him and don't take you out of the game. Kevin Love is a detraction because he can hit threes, he can set screens, and he can outlet pass. And those outlet passes are huge because Denver has to pay attention, especially if the Joker's back there. The Joker got to make up for that time and go back and actually, you know, jump on the situation. He got to go in there and keep his head on the swivel, which is going to keep him running, keep him moving. So you can hopefully get him on the bench. Now, what I saw in this whole series is a change of pace once Kevin Love was implanted into the lineup. It changed the game. It brought everything to a to a halt. It brought everything full circle to me. So I'm I'm somebody who totally understands where the game is, how it is, and where it should be. Well, no, it's uh, many different people who had uh, different routines. They had different uh, different uh, attitudes. Uh, they had different philosophies. They had, you know, a lot of different ways about themselves, you know, and that was it. But if I see the, the Miami Heat and the coaching aspect of it and how everybody's playing this cat and mouse game and trying to find out what's going to work on this play, what's not going to work on that play, I mean, that's what's where the challenge is. That's where the, the game is interesting. That's where it's won or lost. You know, you want you want those battles. You want those type of mental uh, frustrations to frustrate another person or human being. You want those type of involvements in the game. I look at the game now, and I'm I'm disappointed when I look at how they're trying to mar it up with all this LeBron James talk. That don't make no damn sense. You got two great teams playing in the NBA Finals. Promote your talent. And if you don't know how to promote your talent, then you're not good at your job. That's just it. You pay all these analysts to sit there and analyze and break down the game. You pay them seven figures a year, some getting eight. And yet and still, they can't even promote your game. That's a problem there. Don't you think? Or or what or you paying them to do something else? Because they're not promoting your game. They're promoting your agenda. 
So if your agenda is what you want promoted more than the game, you've already screwed up the game. Because if I'm a player and I'm on another team, why? what is it important if I win the championship if the NBA is not even behind us? The league. There's, there, we win a championship. They're talking about what the Lakers going to do next year. I'm just mad at the way that they're handling dealing with the game itself. Michael Malone is right. And he was so right to call out this biased media because that's, that's where the problem is. The coaches are doing their jobs. These are two coaches that are doing their jobs. But yet, everything they're doing is going to get marred. And why is it going to get marred? Because you have foolish people in play. And when you got foolish people in play, these are the examples that are left out on the court. No one's talking about adjustments that was made in the game. Things that we love to see. Well, Miami made an adjustment that Michael Malone's going to have to adjust to in game three. And that is how they deal with Duncan Robinson entering the game and Kevin Love. Kevin Love was unexpected. He hadn't played in three games. Kevin Love changed the whole dynamic of the game. And Denver was unprepared and they were socked in the mouth because they were not prepared and scouting Kevin Love. They were, in, they were unprepared for him attacking the glass. They forgot he could shoot threes. Left him open on a lot of pick and rolls. And he made them pay. He was aggressive, but wasn't reckless aggressiveness. He was perfectly balanced for the game. And he gave them the dynamic that they need. They put bodies on bodies. And that's what you need. Basketball is a simple game. People try to overcomplicate, you know, make it make it over complicated when it's not the issue. Basketball becomes complicated when other people make it complicated. Selling a game isn't hard if you sell your talent. Why do you think back in the 80s, back in the 90s, every team had a star player? A team who was the, a player who was the star of that team, from David Robinson to Carl Malone in Stockton to Dominique in Atlanta. It didn't matter what team it was, there was a star player on that team leading that team. So those names stood out that the casuals would even know. Who Dominique Wilkins is. My mom knows who Dominique is. It wasn't just Magic and Bird. And they promoted the hell out of Magic and Bird. But they also promoted their league because they know that there's other games. We got 28 other teams. I can, we can't just talk about Magic and Bird. We got Dr. J, Moses Malone. Now we got Bark. Doc retired. Here comes Charles Bark. You know, he played with Doc for one season. And Doc, you know, retired. And then it was Charles' team. Every team had somebody. So this is where we mean by greatness and we mean by the actual talent level and the talent pool. The game was marketed different. The game was promoted different. Now we're, we're, we're in a whole nother realm of technology. And David Stern's philosophy is follow the technology. Wherever the technology go, we need to follow it there. Uh, most people don't get it, but I understand what exactly I need to do and how I need to do it. But this is why I look at the game from a different set of eyes. 
than just following this BS narrative that the NBA is trying to, to force down people's throats by creating false LeBron James stories, period. Like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, is Kyrie Irving asking LeBron to come to the Dallas Mavericks. LeBron is ball dominant. Luka is ball dominant. Kyrie Irving is ball dominant. To even talk about that is stupid. The money don't add up. LeBron would have to take a tremendous pay cut and for next season. So even if, okay, after this season, let's say he wants to go to Dallas. Okay, you're going to play for the veteran minimum? You play with Luka and Kyrie just to slow them down? Because that's all you're going to do. Then you're going to get mad at Mark Cuban. You're going to get mad at why Cuban ain't doing this, Cuban ain't doing that. And Dallas ain't the place that's LeBron friendly at all. <laughs> they ain't going to go for you whining and complaining and causing trouble on Dallas. And then, and you ain't the favorite on the team. Just like this Laker team, you're the third best player on the team. You the old shoe that they would be dragging around. So I don't even want to waste my time with those type of narratives because I feel it's all time wasted, you know? So when you get into that realm, you know, it's time wasted. I'd rather be doing other things than sitting there wasting my time talking about a person that don't, that don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? So from that standpoint, Screw them. Focus on the Miami Heat and the Denver Nuggets. Anybody that subscribed to me and see this video, that's what time it is. So if you if you see that, you know exactly what time it is. Um, I don't know what else to say but that. Because that's all it is. <laughs> don't like I said before, follow my Carcino for Life Patreon. We're going to start telling you another untold story about Jordan and Pippen that that may have led to all this from a long time ago. And we're going to talk about we're going to talk about something else on the Patreon too. We're going to get back to business. And then we're going to talk Yeah, we're going to talk about some other things that's mostly helpful in this month of June. Now, May was probably my most active month in Patreon history. My most active month. Now we're going to see where we go from there. But like I said, I did all my shouts out earlier. Uh, Mondo Black TV is another one. Shout out to him, Damn D. Shout out to him. Subscribe to those two brothers. Even though Damn D got like 55 channels. Uh, I don't know <laughs> which one is which. Uh, one Crack News, uh, my Screen Fame movie channel. Uh, the memberships is finna pop up soon. Finna give away Ant-Man and the Wasp for free. Then we gonna start, you know, doing more giveaways. Giving out stuff over there. So, you know, the sky's up. The sky's the future. Yeah, man, uh, that's it. <laughs> I can go back to Texas now because this is crazy what's been going on today. <laughs>